Now look what it says. Give them reason to do this with joy and not with sorrow. That would certainly not be for your benefit, right? You don't want to get the, the leaders angry. Pray for us, for our conscience is clear, and we want to live honorably in everything we do. Look, all these things will give you contentment. And especially pray that I will be able to come back to you soon. Now look what it says in verse 20. May the God of peace, who brought up from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, and ratified an eternal covenant with his blood, may he equip you with all you need. Listen to this. How do you get equipped? How do you get equipped with all you need? By going, by going out and passing out tracks and going on missions and doing everything? No, that's not how you get equipped. That's not how you get equipped. You get equipped by what? Learning the word of God, putting it into your mind, and letting it become part of you and living it out. Nobody has to tell you how to live. God tells you how to live, and he gives you certain things in your heart. All you need for doing whose will? His will. Mm -hmm. How? Through the power of Jesus Christ. Now, how do you get power from Jesus Christ? Do you go to the cross and say, Jesus, yeah. wait for the power. Wait for it to come through that cross into me. Is that how you get it? You want to know better if you've been coming here. That's not how you get it. Who's the power? Where's the power of Jesus Christ? The Word. Yep. It's in the Word of God. Not by any crazy other stuff, but in the Word of God is the power you need to live out a godly spiritual life. Stop making excuses. The excuses, there's no excuse for you living out a godly life because it's in the Word of God. Oh, but I'm so weak and thank God for His grace that I can live whatever way I want. Silly nonsense. Amen. Silly nonsense. To use that as an excuse to live an evil, sinful life, you are not even understanding what Jesus did for you. Right. And people do that all the time. I'm on the grace. I'm on the grace. That's only a small part of the Bible, grace. The rest is living right. Yep. Yeah. I can live whatever way I want. I'm a child of God. Gee, remember when um, Jesus said to the... the Oh, we can make spiritual people out of these rocks. We can make Jews out of the rocks. Mm -hmm. You think you're, you're, you're spiritual because of what's been done, what's been done under the covenant? No, Jesus, Jesus can make them out of these rocks. He can make people. You know, just because you believe in one, it doesn't. Uh, the Bible. Well, I'm going to teach on this. It's coming. It's coming. Just because oh, I believe in Jesus and I'm going to heaven and I can just live whatever way I want. You're not a believer. Stop it. You're not a believer. A believer has a changed heart. There's something different that goes on in them. They want to learn about God. Even though they fail, they don't act of sinful rebellion against God. Stop it. People don't understand the word of God. Oh, grace. 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 Yeah. Grace to do the right thing. A new spirit, new heart. Do you hear an amen for that? Amen. Amen. No, I'm going to live a sloppy, sinful, self-indulgent life because I got a ticket to heaven. Well, you might as well just go pay an indulgence fee then a ten grand if you want your ticket to heaven that way. Why bother? It's all a deception. When God gifts us with his salvation, guess what? He gives us with a whole new life to become part of his family and to do his will. And there's something in you that wants to accomplish that, just like you're here tonight. Something in you wants to accomplish that even though you know you fail at times. That's right. That's how you know. Even though you want to do it, you have a sinful nature that wants to take over you. Mm. But you don't want to say, well, I'm saved. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, Satan, let's go out for one. <laughs> I'm saved. Nonsense. That's not biblical. There's no salvation in that. None. When God gifts you, he gifts you to what? Become his masterpiece and serve him. And get rid of your sinful nature. If you're still living in your fleshly sinful nature, after all the years of becoming a Christian, you have to say to yourself, 
Did I really accept him as my Lord and Savior, or am I under control of the other one? Mm. Nonsense. Look, you know what the gift of God is? The salvation that he's given me? After all the stuff I did before I found him, he says, that's all done. That's salvation. I'm saved from all that. The penalties are hell. He says, you know, I know, John, that you're going to fail at times. But guess what? My grace is sufficient for you. My power was best in your weakness. So does that say to me, oh, I'm just weak. Give me this and give me that. His power is not working. No, the devil's power is working. No. Listen to this. May he equip you with all you need for doing his will. May he produce in you through the power of Jesus Christ every good thing that is pleasing to people and myself. No, pleasing God and pleasing yourself are on the opposite ends of the spectrum. Pleasing God is saying, you know what? I can't do that. I have to go. I have to do what God wants me to do today. I can't do what I want to do. And there's something in you that tells you I need to be in church. Amen. Look, when Noah built the ark, when God was going to judge the world, how many people were on that boat? Eight. Out of mm -hmm. how many? The whole world. Mm -hmm. The road is narrow, the Bible says. The path that leads to destruction is wide for people who choose that way. But the road that leads to life is narrow and <coughs> difficult. And very few ever find it. Now, if you're on the road that leads to life, you know how difficult that is because of your flesh. I'm not trying to stay in that rule, but... Right? But God gives us the grace and the power to go like this. Thanks. Nope, that's been done. That's paid for. Look, I'm getting back up. I'm going that way. Right. Even though I know the devil got hold of me today, guess what, devil? I ain't letting you get hold of me tomorrow. Right. It's Jesus. overdone. It's not like, okay, I'm saved. Okay, devil, let's go. Let's take the side road. That's not salvation. Salvation is knowing the road to go on and letting him pave it and him but going like this. Overcoming him one day at a time. I don't know about you, but I ain't going to be perfect till I go home to be with him. But I'll tell you one thing. I'm staying on the road that God lays out for me. Even though I might fail, I'm getting, the Bible tells me to get back up and go, John. Mm -hmm. Just go. Don't get beat up by your sins. Stay connected to your, his son. This is, what, this is what frees us from that over time. All glory to him forever and ever. Look what it says in verse 22. I urge you, dear brothers, to pay attention to what I've written in this brief exhortation. See, I want you to know that our brother Timothy has been released from jail. If he comes here soon, I will bring him with me to see you. Now, Timothy was in jail. Now, you think Timothy, like, robbed the bank? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, Timothy was persecuted. He went to jail because of his faith. Yeah. Look, I want you to know he's been released from jail. If he comes here soon, I'll bring him with me to see you. Greet all your leaders and all the believers there. The believers from Italy send you their greetings. <laughs> hey, I'm, hey, I'm <laughs> There's going to be a connection there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> I even got the initials. Yeah. <laughs> Turn on your license plate. It's funny because my boss calls me JC. Yeah, that's what he calls me. You know what I mean? <laughs> Not that I am far from it, but it's just, it's funny. Yeah. May God's grace be with you all. Look at that. Just think that, look, it stopped at 7 o'clock. We just read that. That was spirit. That whole thing that yeah. was not planned yeah. to read that exhortation. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, read that. Say, you know what? Mm -hmm. I'm going to give honor. Look, instead of complaining about my wife, I'm going to give honor to my wife. I'm gonna, you can hold me to it, right? <laughs> oh, you know when you get on me for not, for not picking up my stuff off the floor. I'm going to still honor you. <laughs> She's been putting up with me for a long time. And I know my flesh is weak, you know, in certain areas. And She's always 
John, she gives me a, she gives me another chance. You know what I mean? That's awesome. That's grace. Mm -hmm. When I can't fulfill all her needs, guess who kicks in? Jesus. Mm -hmm. When you put Jesus in the center of your marriage, even though you might think your marriage is falling apart, Jesus will be the glue that holds it together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you'll go to him to meet your needs, not them. Because no human being can meet all your needs. No. That's why people leave each other. Because you're not meeting all my needs. No, I can't. Mm -hmm. But he can. Mm -hmm. See, that's why we grow spiritually. That's, that's the center. And you end up having a great marriage and great relationships with people. <laughs> all right, we're going to stop there. Thank you. Thank you. And we're going to close.